our psalm before the Bible reading uh, this evening will be number 308. Number 308, Wonderful Words of Life. Number 308. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the Blessed One gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinner lists to the loving call wonderful words of life. All so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Jesus only Savior, sanctify forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 10, 5 through 10 in the ESV version. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. Acquire no gold or silver or copper for your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for the laborer deserves his food. Our song before the opening prayer will be number 702. Uh, this is a song a few people know, I think, but it's, it's a song sung by children a lot. But we are going to sing all three verses, and it is a very important song for all of us to sing. Jesus loves me. Mm, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died. Heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash away my sin. Let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus, take this heart of mine. Make it pure and holy thine. On the cross you died for me. I will try to live for thee. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so.
We bow and please. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this beautiful Lord's Day you bless us with. And thank you for the opportunity and privilege we have to assemble in your name and sing these songs of praise, that great and holy name. And read scripture from your word and come to you in prayer. Pray that you will especially be with Brother Tom tonight as he brings the message. Please uh, give him ready recollection of the things that he's prepared to teach tonight and please be with each one of us that we will concentrate upon you and your word and help us to read and study your word daily that we might draw closer to you we might be the christian examples you have us be and be willing and able to share your good news with others help us to never be ashamed of your gospel your truth and help us to realize that no matter what the consequences uh, here on earth, uh, if we're on your team, we will be victorious in the end. Just so thankful for Jesus and the life that he lived here as a man and the life that he so willingly gave on Calvary's cross and mission of our sins. Help us to never take this sacrifice for granted. Realize with, without this sacrifice, we'd have no hope of eternal life just pray that you will be with each of us throughout this week and help us to strive to do your will each day and help us to help others in any way we can help us to be a servant and to be humble in your sight father we pray for your church the world world over especially our congregation here at Stroudsville and Please continue to be with our elders and their families. They, they shepherd the flock here. and Please grant them the wisdom they need to lead us in a way that you'd have us go, that we may grow in spirit and in number. Please continue to be with the deacons and their families and various ministries that are taking place here. And pray that you'll please be with each and every member. Help us all to work in unity and strive to, to do your will and spread your good news throughout this community and throughout the world pray especially for those missionaries that we support especially those who are in various uh, very dangerous places pray that you will please grant them safety please help them to conduct their work in such a way that many souls may, may be brought to you for it's everlasting too late Pray, Father, for all those who are sick, and please uh, help each one to get better, if it be in keeping your will. Pray that you'll continue to be with those lost loved ones, and please comfort and strengthen them as only you can do. Father, we ask you to just guide us in all that we do, and please forgive us for our sin. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. At this time, would you please mark the invitation song, which will be number 580. The invitation song will be number 580. Before the lesson this evening, we'll sing number 377, Farther Along. We'll sing the first, second, and last verses. Will you stand, please? Tempted and tried, we're off made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long, while there are others living about us, never molested, though in the wrong. Father, along, we'll know all about it. Father, along, we'll understand why cheer up my brother live in the sunshine we'll understand it all by and by when death has come and taken our loved ones it leaves our home so lonely and drear then do we wonder 
why others prosper, living so wicked year after year. Father along will know all about it. Father along will understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. When we see Jesus coming in glory, when he comes from his home in the sky, then we shall meet him in that bright mansion. We'll understand it all by and by. Father along will know all about it. Father along will understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Be seated, please. So good to see everyone here tonight. Thank you for being here. I hope you'll join us for our fellowship meal following the lesson. I probably won't go a, a full hour and a half tonight, so... Uh, we try to keep it short and let everybody get to the meal. One of my favorite lesson series that I bring from time to time is the story behind the song. And I don't Is Glenn here tonight? Oh, there you are. Glenn, he just always comes and says, I just enjoy those sermons so much because you learn the meaning of the song and how it was created and, and the environment of the writers. And, and so I'm, I'm glad to bring another one of those. Glenn, I think other members will enjoy it as well. And I want to say thank you to Gentry. Years ago, uh, when I started working on these lessons, Gentry contributed a, a book called The the, uh, the Story. I think it's, uh, anyway, I've forgotten the name of the book. But anyway, I'll refer to it later on in the lesson. But I appreciate Gentry letting me use that book. Um, it's 101 more stories behind the song, something like that. But I'll, I'll refer to it. But... What we're going to do tonight is the sweet uh, by and by. This is a song I remember and cherish growing up singing. If you want to turn to number 504, the sweet by and by, we'll be singing the stanzas a little bit later during the song, but I want to tell you the story behind the song. And then what I always try to do on these lessons is we stop and do a, a spiritual application. We look at the stanzas uh, of each song and then jump into the Bible and say, well, you know, what was the writer really trying to say and, and what's the scriptural basis for this thought and the hope? One of the things I like about Sweet By and By, it's a, it's a song about longing for our home, uh, longing for heaven. We know that this home, by design, is temporal. It is, it is, it is uh, going to, Peter tells us it's going to burn up with a great heat. heat. All, the, all the elements are going to burn. Everything that you stand on, that you see, uh, will be gone with the exception of one thing and that is the souls that belong to each human being created on this planet that part of us goes on forever the Bible tells us that we'll stand before the Lord on a great judgment day and he based on our obedience to the word and our faithfulness uh, we will go either to live with him forever or we'll go into eternal place of punishment where God is not found and so uh, for those who are faithful and saved and washed in the blood of Jesus, that's a very exciting thought to think about, especially as we get older and our body begins to creak and ache and we realize we're wearing out. Young people can't relate to that. Old people are like, yeah, I get it. I understand. Um, we long for that new body. We long, you know, when the rain's coming, our bones feel it. We start to, we start to age and have arthritis and, and, and creak and when we get up, we moan a little bit. So we long for the sweet by and by, that time where we're with the Lord. So um, I wanted to start out by just introducing the song and saying it's written by Sanford F. Bennett. You've probably not heard of him. That's okay. This is the only song he's probably known for. And then the composer, and in, in case you're wondering, a, a writer comes up with the words, and a composer is the one that puts it to music. 
And uh, this is by a noted musician, Joseph P. Webster. He's the gentleman on the bottom right in the, in, um, um, the bottom right of the picture. If you're looking at a theme for a particular song, you'll notice uh, if you turn to 504, uh, you'll see Sweet By and By. It says on the left, S.F. Bennett. And I'm just giving you a little basics of song. For those of you who have led songs or would like to lead songs or are always curious, when you look at a song, uh, Sweet By and By, on the left it shows the, the writer, uh, S.F. Bennett, and on the, on the right, the composer, Joseph P. Webster. And then right under Joseph P. Webster, if you're looking at number 504, you'll see a, a reference to two scriptures, which is more of a theme of the song. It captures this idea. And what I'm going to do tonight is start off with John 14 and verse 1. I love this passage. It was toward the end of Jesus' ministry. And he's been saying some rather disturbing things to them about being crucified and going away and not leaving them as orphans. And, and they're rather confused, like, well, you're the Messiah. You're going to deliver us. You're, you're going to bring our, the people of Israel back to a state of greatness. And how can you talk about being gone? So now he really uh, tells them about where he's going and that he'll be coming back. But it's not an earthly kingdom. Let not your hearts be troubled, Jesus says. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. Some translations say mansions. And if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? It's a rhetorical question. The answer is no. If it wasn't so, you wouldn't have told us you're going. And if I go, he says, and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I'm coming back. I'll be back. And will take you to myself. You'll join me there. That where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I'm going. He said, I'm telling you now, so you'll be able to anticipate or know where I'm going. It was still confusing to the apostles. They didn't really understand uh, what he meant. Now, if you look back at your song, number 504, Sweet By and By, we've already looked at John 14, 1 through 3, just a little bit of the mechanics of a song. If I'm a song leader and I get up, or Howard, or, or Jesse, or any other song leader, you'll notice that there's a funny-looking symbol on the top. That's your treble clef. And then the other symbol that kind of looks like a, uh, a backward C at your bass clef, and you start at the top note uh, on the left. See the little diamond shape at the very top left? That is called your do note. That's the key note. In just a moment, I'll hum that note for you when we sing. And then directly under that, you see another shape note. That is the, um, basically, the soprano is the top, alto is the bottom left keep coming down to the bass clef, then you'll see another note under that. That's your tenor line. Some of you may sing tenor. Um, a lot of times people say, well, I don't sing anything. I just sing lead. Well, that means you probably sing the top line, the, the soprano. Um, the tenor line is, is the third down, and then the, think of the, the lowest notes would be the bass notes at the bottom of the bass clef. It is a time signature of 4-4, four, four, and what that means for me in a moment when I lead the song to you, I'll start with an up note, all right, and then down. That's the stroke of the first sig time signature. And I, I do left-handed. That's confusing. But one, two, three, four. And then when I start down again, you'll notice it follows. If you look at that top line, you'll notice a vertical line after a few notes and another vertical line and another vertical line. That's your time signature. And so when I go down, it's the first note to the right of the vertical line. So you'll follow that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So that's the time or the, the meter of the song. I've not had formal musical training, so excuse me if I'm saying this wrong, but from what little I know, this is the, the, how you lead a song. Some are three, four. Some are six, eight. Some are two, two. But this is a four, four. So... It's just the, the rhythm of the song, all right? Four beats per measure, and um, that's pretty much it. You have a stanza, one through and three, and then you have your chorus, which you repeat between the songs. Now, interestingly enough, uh, 
the, the evolution of these different hymns that were written in 17, 18, maybe early 1900s, not all of the stanzas that were written on all songs are in our books, um, the songs of the church. As a matter of fact, I'll introduce a stanza that was not included in the song, but was originally written. So uh, this was a blog that somebody found uh, an extra stanza that went with this song that wasn't included in the original publishing. Now, this hymn first appeared in 1868. Um, it was following, I believe, the Civil War, and it was called The Signet Ring, A New Collection of Music and Hymns. And I want to first tell you about... Um, Bennett. Now, here's Bennett in slide six. He's uh, the gentleman that um, you'll see him pictured left. Bennett, um, re just after the Civil War, he, he returned to Elkhorn, Wisconsin. And uh, what he did, he's, he, if you go back and research Bennett, he's done a lot of different things. He was involved in politics for a while. I think he was a school administrator. But in this particular stint, when the song was written, uh, I think he opted for a little simpler life, and he just ran a local drugstore. And so he was the owner, the proprietor of the drugstore. He was initially, as a younger person, converted as a Methodist, and that's where he was introduced uh, to Jesus, and it was at a revival meeting. Interestingly enough, um, maybe one of the reasons he owned a drugstore is that he had an interest in medicine. He later went on to medical college. Um, at, at Rush Medical College and then practiced as a medical doctor for 22 years. So I, what I want you to envision in your minds is I want you to envision Elkhorn, Wisconsin is a, kind of a, a small town, a very warm, small store uh, with maybe a pot belly stove where friends would sit and have casual conversations and occasionally a customer would come in. But the next person I'll introduce in this slide is actually Webster, who is a friend of um, Bennett. So let me tell you a little about Webster. He's the one that actually scored the music on this song, and I'll tell you I'll tell you how this was written in a minute. But first, about Webster. Webster was a composer and music teacher, very musically inclined. He was particularly skilled at violin, the flute, and piano. I believe he did those three very well. He was considered as a leading musician in town. Uh, he moved to Elkhorn for one reason, because of his anti-slavery sentiments. This was in 1857. And uh, he had just strong feelings against slavery. Um, and so that's why he moved to this particular town, settled in, and befriended um, uh, Bennett. So it was very common for... Um, Webster to come into the drugstore to sit down and talk to Bennett and just friendly conversation, share, discuss things. They were both believers. And so uh, here is the story about, um, in just a moment, I'll tell you about him coming into the store one afternoon for a friendly discussion. That's how this song basically got written. Now the next slide, it's interesting, I want you to remember Webster's face. Elkhorn, Wisconsin, if you go there even to this day, their website is still up and they have a museum called the Webster House. This is celebrating him uh, as, a, uh, as a composer. And because this song was so popular, he also wrote a very popular uh, Civil War song that was sung by many troops. But this is the authentic 19th century home of, of him, of uh, Webster. Inside, if you take a tour of the house, they'll be sure and point out a violin. Now, I'll tell you why in a moment, but uh, anyway, his violin, which is part of this story, is inside the house, and it was first used to play this melody. So let's continue with our story, and I'll explain a little bit about how this got going. Um, Webster, Bennett tells the story of how Webster, violin under his arm, is walking into the store one quiet winter afternoon for a casual conversation. And this is Gentry's book, uh, 101 More Hymn Stories by Kenneth Osbeck. So, uh, Brian, you had, you had prayed earlier for a ready recollection. And unfortunately, I left my book at home that I was going to read the story about. Meg sent me a picture, so I don't have to try to recall. I don't have a photographic memory. So I'm looking at my iPad now, the picture Meg sent me. So let me share with you this very interesting story of the, the origin of Sweet By and By. Glenn, finally, we're getting to how it was created. 
Here's the story. These two gentlemen met often in Bennett's drugstore for friendly discussions. Bennett tells the story of how Webster, violin under his arm, dropped in to see him one quiet winter afternoon. Now, I got to stop and laugh a little bit because apparently Bennett uh, is sort of a study of human nature. You know how you know somebody really well and at a glance you can tell what kind of day they're having, just maybe expression on their face, how they carry themselves, their mannerisms. You just know somebody so well you can tell they're having a good day or not having a good day. So here's what Bennett says about Webster. I, I thought this was funny. Mr. Webster, like many musicians, was of an exceeding nervous and sensitive nature. Now, I don't know what that means, but that was his observation. He was, had a nervous and sensitive nature and subject to periods of depression. Now, for one thing, it's the winter time. Do y'all get depressed in the winter? I do. It's hard. It's gray, it's cold, it's rainy. I want the sunshine and the birds. So this, this musician was subject to periods of depression in which he looked upon the dark side of all things in life. All right, He was not your proverbial optimist. He kind of had a downer attitude sometimes. I had learned his peculiarities so well, Bennett says, that on meeting him, I could tell at a glance if he was melancholy and had found that I could rouse him by giving him a new song on which to work. So if you want to cheer up a, a songwriter, composer, give him some words you've written, some poetry, and say, put this to music. He'd snap her out, out, of, out of it. He came into my place of business, walked down to the stove, and turned his back on me without speaking. And so immediately Bennett could tell something was up. I was at my desk writing, turning to him. I said, Webster, what is the matter now? It is no matter, he replied. It will be all right by and by. The idea came to me like a flash of sunlight. And I replied, the sweet by and by. Why would not that make a good hymn? Maybe it would, said he indifferently. Turning to my desk, I pinned the words as fast as I could write. I handed the words to Webster. As he read, his eyes kindled. And stepping to the desk, he began writing the notes. Taking his uh, violin, he played the melody and then jotted down the notes of the chorus. It was not over 30 minutes from the time I took my pen to write the words before two friends with Webster and myself were singing the hymn. Isn't that interesting? This was all created in 30 minutes from the minds of two friends, one rather melancholy but very musically inclined, the other had a gift with words. The sweet by and by was created in 30 minutes. So what I want to do is sing the first stanza. If you'll join me, you can sing from the book or you can sing um, from the overhead. I've got the words in the chorus here, but I promised you I'd start out with the doe note. So let me go to my um, musical app. Notice that diamond on the top left, if you're at 504, that's the do note or the starting note. And if you want to figure it out, look at the bottom line. Every good boy does fine. All right, so it's an E. The spaces are F-A-C-E, so I'm going to hit uh, G. Notice it's on the second line up from the bottom, E-G. Turn my sound on. Mm -hmm. That's our starting note. Mm, we'll sing the uh, first stanza and the chorus. Mm, there's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way. 
to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore all right let's talk about these stanzas but first i want to sing an additional stanza one uh, not printed in this book uh, we shall meet we shall meet we shall sing we shall reign in that land where the same never die we shall rest free from sorrow and pain safe at home in the sweet by and by we shall plead by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore if you'll open your bibles we're going to turn now to um the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 11, the great faith chapter. And I want to just talk about this uh, first stanza and the faith. So give me just a moment to turn there. Hebrews 11, the great faith chapter. It says here in the first stanza, There is a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar for the father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there there's only a very few people who maybe have seen paradise and come back to earth i know paul was caught up in the third heaven he says whether i was in body or spirit i know not but he saw things that he wasn't allowed to repeat he was given this heavenly vision none of us mortal men or, or women have that ability to glimpse into the life beyond now if you're like me and you've lost someone close to you recently and there's been a death in your family of, of a Christian, you, you long to know where they go, what they see, what they experience, their level of consciousness. And so we think about it a lot. But since I can't physically see it, I can't go visit it. I can only see it by faith. I see it afar. I believe that the Father is waiting over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. That's what Jesus promised us. So, in this text, um, I wanted to review just quickly um, what this means and draw some spiritual truths. In Hebrews 11, if you turn to, if you look at verse 13 and 14, I want to just focus on on this idea for a moment about seeing our future home from afar. Verse 13 it gives a list of faithful heroes in the Bible. Abraham, Sarah, uh, Jacob, all these different individuals, uh, Noah. It says that these, verse 13, all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar. I think this is why that stanza was written. We can't see it, but yet by faith we see it from afar. And having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth, for people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they'd been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country. That is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. Oh, I don't know about you. I'm kind of excited about that new home. And as I get older, and as I realize the brevity of life, the uncertainty of life, I feel comforted in knowing that whatever happens, I've seen my new home. I haven't seen it with my eyes, but I see it by faith from afar. In this land uh, we believe is real, we haven't seen it with our physical eyes, but we walk by faith. And now I'd like to ask you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, if you have your Bibles. 
2 Corinthians 5, this will be our next reading about faith, seeing it from afar. We're going to read verses 1 through 7. In my Bible, the title is Our Heavenly Dwelling. Now, uh, recently when I did uh, Bob Scott's funeral, uh, I read from this very passage saying that Bob had folded up his tent. His physical body is no longer among the living, but yet his spirit went to a place, it, a place that God had prepared for him. If we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a, a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling, if indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. It goes on to say in verse 6, We are always of good courage, we know that while we're at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. We walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Amen. So in that sweet by and by, we believe. We see not with our physical eye, but with our spiritual eyes. We see the new place that Jesus has gone to prepare for us. And I just want you to enjoy the fact that you know that whatever happens to you, whenever it happens, whenever you cease to breathe in your body, that tent is folded up and no longer you occupied on this earth. He has prepared a place, a wonderful place. So when we get there, what will we do, some ask? Well, that's a good question. Some people have asked me, Brother Tom, will we have jobs in heaven? The answer is probably I don't know what we're going to do. Will we walk nature trails and listen to the birds? Will we sit by a babbling brook all day long and have conversation? Will we praise God? Will we sing before the throne? Will we sit by the river of life? I don't know, but I'm sure God has plenty of things for us to do, including praising him. One of the things that was written in the song that I find interesting in the second stanza is he says that we shall sing on that beautiful shore. Well, what will we sing? The melodious songs of the blessed. Our spirit shall sorrow no more, not a sigh for the blessing of rest. Think about how often in this earth we grow tired, weary, depressed, sad. We watch the news and we're like, oh man, why are we in this self-destruct mode on earth? Why do we destroy each other? Why are we greedy? Why are we immoral? Why do we do things that are violent? That's because we're in these carnal bodies. But in heaven, we'll sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed. Our spirits will never sorrow. There's no pain, no suffering. We won't sigh for rest because we will be in our eternal home of rest. Let's sing this stanza. We shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed and our spirit shall sorrow no more not a sigh for the blessing of rest in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet beautiful shore. Now, in Revelation 22, 1 through 5, it mentions the beautiful shore is by that pure river of the water of life. This idea of this water of life is that whoever has the ability to partake of this water, they live forever. The righteous are pictured as serving God and reigning forever with him. Revelation 22, 1 through 5. Let's turn there very quickly and read the passage together. I just appreciate um, the writing of the song and how quickly it came together. And these verses, how they touch on various parts of scripture and they reinforce all the things that we know by faith. 
In Revelation 22, let's read together. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Through the middle of the street of the city also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. At night there will be no more. There will be no need. They will need no light or lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. It says here also in Revelation 5, 8 through 10, that the redeemed of all the ages will join the angels, that we will sing the melodious songs of the blessed. And uh, I think this is a reference to where uh, kings are encircling uh, the Lamb of God, and they cast their crowns, and it says that they sing a new song. They sing a melodious song. We'll sing in heaven, and uh, some people say, well, thank goodness, because my voice on this earth is not very good. I make a joyful noise, but I, I can't harmonize. And I said, well, brother or sister, in heaven, you'll sing perfectly, and you'll sing with all the angels. It'll be a wonderful time. So to me, uh, this is such a wonderful memory to sing the sweet by and by and long for that time when I'll be in heaven singing with the angels. Let's sing the last stanza and we'll close our lesson tonight. To our bountiful Father above, we will offer you our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love. And the blessings that hallow our days In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore in Hebrews 13, 15, there's a reference to our hope of eternal life. And we should offer to him our tribute of praise. Let's turn very quick, quickly to Hebrews 13, if you have your Bibles. Let's see what that text says. Hebrews <clears throat> chapter 13, verse 15. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of of our lips that acknowledge his name. In other words, we have to realize that our Father has given us great blessings on this earth. To our bountiful Father above, we will offer our tribute of praise. We'll continue praising him on this earth with our mouths. When we're in heaven, we'll continue to praise him. What do we praise him for? It says here in the stanza, for the glorious gift of his love. There's no greater love than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. I mentioned this morning that the story of Jesus is the greatest love story will ever be told. It's a story of love because he gave his life for us. He covered our sins with his blood. And the blessings, basically the spiritual blessings in Christ, make our days holy here on earth. We are part of a spiritual priesthood, God's kingdom, even though we occupy mortal bodies. The word hallow, H-A-L-L-O-W, in that last stanza means to make holy. The blessings that make holy our days. One of those things that makes us blessed is indwelling of his own spirit. When we become a Christian and we're immersed in the waters of baptism, Peter promises the indwelling of his spirit in each child of God. How are we made holy? God gives us his Holy Spirit. And so um, the last passage I'd like to read is James 1, 17, and then we'll bring the lesson to a close. James 1, 17. Thank you for your attention tonight. I hope you've enjoyed this song. I'm, I'm just stunned that they wrote this in 30 minutes. You have two godly men, one a writer, who quickly, because his friend is depressed and he knows he needs a song, he pins these words so quickly in, in poetry form, hands it to the composer, and he gets his violin and and plays out a song, writes the notes down, and we have this new beautiful song in the sweet by and by. James 1 and verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. 
coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. As children of God, I hope that you'll just sing out in praises to him. I think that maybe when you get depressed or sad, you can think of this song, sweet by and by, and say, God, no matter how bad it gets here on earth, no matter how depressed I may get, I know there is an eternal home where I'll sing praises to you and bless your name forever. Tonight, we simply ask you this question as Howard leads us in an invitation song. If you're not a Christian, maybe you're listening virtually online tonight and you have not been immersed in the waters of baptism, God wants to bestow upon you these incredible gifts of eternal life. He wants to give you spiritual blessings as you walk the earth the remainder of your days. And if you haven't been baptized into Christ, if you have not confessed his name, or maybe you're involved in sin and need to confess sin, do something about it. And the simple question is, why keep Jesus waiting? That's the invitation song tonight. Don't delay. He's knocking at the door. He's inviting you. He wants you to have that blessed spiritual life. Don't keep him waiting. Let's stand and sing as Howard leads us. Sing the first and last verses. Mm. Why keep Jesus waiting, waiting in the cold? He will bear you gently, gently to his fold. See him soul and open, I implore. Why keep Jesus waiting, knocking at the door? Soon he'll cease his pleading. Yes, forevermore. Come, poor soul, obey him. I implore. If there are any here tonight who have not had an opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper, it is prepared. Uh, you can exit the rear of the auditorium and be shown where you'll be served. Uh, our closing song will be number 196. There's not a friend. We'll sing the first and last verse. There's not a friend. Mm. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal all our soul's diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. There's not an hour that he is not near us. No, not one. No, not one. No night so dark but his love can cheer us. No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one, no, not one. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful Lord's Day, and we thank you for the opportunity we had to come to tonight and hear another lesson from your word. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the song that we sang tonight and we learned about and the meaning. And Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for, for that one day we will be with you in a sweet by and by. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray that you'll be with each one of us, that we will live our lives, that when this life is over, that we can be on the other side with you. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray that you'll be with each one of us, that we will 
share the gospel to those that we come in contact with, uh, friends and family and co-workers. Heavenly Father, that we can spread your good news to them where they can obey the gospel as well. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to be uh, the example that you'd have us to be, uh, that uh, others can see you living in us. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that your son was willing to come to this earth and live among men and die a cruel death on the cross and shed his blood. And it's his blood that forgives us of our sins as we come in contact with your water through baptism. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray that we will share that good news with everyone. Dear Heavenly Father, just please be with our congregation here at Stroudsville. Dear Heavenly Father, just please be with all that's on our prayer list. There's many that are sick, going through tests or going through procedures and fixing to have surgery. We just pray that you will be with them, be with the doctors and nurses that, as they attend them. And dear Heavenly Father, that they can be back in worship with us again. Dear Heavenly Father, please be with those that are grieving at this time over loss of loved ones. May they look to you for comfort as only you can give. Dear Heavenly Father, each and every one of us know that that's one appointment that we will make. We just need to make sure that we're always ready at any drop of a hat to uh, be called home with you. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask that you be with us in that. Dear Heavenly Father, as we're about to go to the fellowship hall, and we just ask you to bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies that we can use our bodies to bring honor and glory to you. We just ask all this in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen.